33 Bechakotai section 1 Remember now what Balak king of Moab devised Rabbi Shia opens by saying how happy are those whose master reproves them out of his care for them Rabbi Yossi says even though God told Israel to remember him when they cry out to him he does not pay attention to them Rabbi Yehuda disagrees and contends that if God had not remembered them Israel would not have survived even a single day in exile he says that when a man wants some action from God he must arouse it through a holy deed or speech below similarly those who want to arouse actions from the side of defilement arouse their aspect through action and word of mouth Rabbi Yehuda draws a distinction between divination and enchantment and says that Israel's deeds are always done in holiness there is no divination or enchantment in them God reminds Israel of the acts that he has done for them and the protection he gave them while they were attached to him one if you walk in my statutes Vayikra 263 Rabbi Shia opened with the verse O oh, my people remember now what Balak king of Moab devised and how Balaam the son of Beer answered him Mishah 65 O oh, my people remember happy is the portion of this people that their master reproves them so O oh, my people remember though you have deviated from the way you are my people and I do not wish to repay you according to your deeds to Rabbi Yitzhak said happy is the portion of the people whose master says to them O oh, my people what have I done to you and wherein have I wearied you testify against me of the three what Balak king of Moab devised that I ask how many things did he plan to do to destroy you and how much wizardry has he incited against you three Rabbi Yossi said the holy one blessed be he said to Israel remember now woe to us that we cry we sob and we remember Hashem what is come upon us each of 51 remember Hashem against the children of Edom Tehillim 1377 yet he does not want to pay attention to us because when he Said to us, or remember in words of entreaty, we did not attend to him. We therefore shout with words like, Remember Hashem, what is come upon us. Remember Hashem against the children of Edom. Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old. Tehillim 742. Remember me, Hashem, when you show favor to your people. Tehillim 1064. Yet he does not wish to pay attention to us. For Rabbi Yehuda said, Surely the Holy One, blessed be he, constantly pays attention to us and remembers us. For had he not attended to Israel and remembered us, they would not have survived in exile a single day. Hence it says, And yet for all that when they are in the land of their enemies, Vayikra 2644. For the Holy One, blessed be he, does not reward us in accordance with our deeds. Five come and behold, Balak was wise and the greatest sorcerer in his deeds. Even more so than Balaam, I have learned that when a man wishes for something from the works of the Holy One, blessed be he, it behooves him to arouse it through a Deed below since through the lower deed the upper deed is aroused the deed below should be done in holiness as already explained where there is no deed there is speech and it depends upon word of mouth to provoke the deed above as supernal holiness should be aroused by action and speech so should all those from the side of defilement arouse their aspect through action and word of mouth six though Balaam was the greatest of all the sorcerers in the world Balak was a greater sorcerer than he for Balak was the greatest in divination while Balaam was great in enchantment divination and enchantment are two greats divination is supported by deeds while enchantment is supported by sight and speech the spirit of defilement is then roused upon them to be clothed by them and it does what it does seven it is not so for holy Israel for they are all holy and all their deeds are done to bring a holy spirit upon them as it is written until a spirit be poured upon us from on high Yeshua. 3215 It is therefore written surely there is no enchantment in Jacob nor is there any divination in Israel. Bimid bar 2323 for Israel are attached to the side of supernal holiness their deeds are done in holiness holiness is brought upon them and they are clothed with eight come and behold Balak was the greatest sage in divination and Balaam in enchantment therefore when Balak wished to join him it is written and the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. Bimid bar 227 come and behold according to word of mouth Balaam was the greatest sorcerer in the world and by applying to enchantment he knew how to fix the time of cursing his curses therefore prevailed consequently Balak wished to complete it with divination and enchantment and hence joined him nine the holy one blessed be he said to him evil man my children preceded you they have something among themselves for which no evil sides no wicked species nor any magic in the world can approach them all flee them what is this it is a tent of meeting with its vessels of holiness and articles of service of the temple incense of spices that annuls any wrath and fury in the world both above and below the daily offerings and the burnt offerings two altars upon which to perform the service of the altar a table and its shoe the labor and its pedestal there are also its articles of service related to speech the ark the two tablets of the torah and Aaron who daily atones for the people in prayer when that wicked man saw this he said surely there is no enchantment in jacob nor is there any divination in Israel. why because hashem is elohim is with him and the trumpet blast of a king is in him bimid bar 23 21 10 the holy one blessed be he therefore said oh my people remember pray be mindful of the time when balak and balaam united to destroy you but could not because i held you as a father holds his child and does not leave his child in the Hands of another from Shittim to Gilgal, Mishah 65, what is the relation between them? He answers the Holy One, blessed be he said to Israel, please remember that as long as you were attached to me, that evil man did not prevail against you with his magic and wizardry once you loosened your hands from holding to me and were at Shittim as it is written, and the people ate and bowed down to their Elohim, Bimid bar 252, and at Gilgal as it is written in Gilgal, they have sacrificed bullocks, Hashia. 1212, then your enemies overpowered you, what is the reason for all that, that you may know the righteous acts of Hashem, Mishah 65, namely all the righteous deeds I did for you when you were attached to me, I let nothing in the world have power over you, and the wrath above and below, and the wicked things were not able to come near you, section 2, and Elohim came to Bilaam at night, Rabbi Yehuda talks about the witchcraft that Bilaam made at night by summoning the Chieftain of the left side that Elohim was also summoned by the spells of Liban and Abai Melech as the name Elohim is shared by all. Even idolatry is called Elohim namely other Elohim and so are the chieftains of the other side eleven and he said to them Lot here this night and I will bring you backward as Hashem shall speak to me. Bimid bar 228 come and behold when the sun sets and all the gates are closed night falls and it becomes dark many legions are loosed from their chains and roam. About the world with several attendants over them to guide them on the left side is the greatest chieftain among them all that highest chieftain whom that evil man Bilaam visited by use of his spells when he was in power with all his companions he would perform witchcraft by night and the chieftain would come and be with him and let him know what he wanted twelve in the same manner Elohim came to Laban the Aramean Bershi 3124 who was with him namely with the aforementioned chieftain also. And Elohim came to Abimelech, Bershi 203, it is all the same, he was universally summoned by the same spells and was therefore more frequent by night than by day since the night is his time of dominion. This has already been explained, Abimelech had many sorcerers and wise men as is written, Abimelech king of the Philistines looked out at a window, Bershi 268, it says here out at a window and elsewhere the mother of Sisera looked out at the window, Shoftim 528 as the former verse pertains. To witchcraft so does the letter about Abimelech pertain to witchcraft, therefore it also says, and Elohim came to Abimelech, namely the chieftain that is summoned through witchcraft, it was already explained that Laban was a sorcerer as was Bilaam, hence Elohim mentioned in relation to them is the chieftain 13 in relation to them all, it is therefore written, Elohim not Yudhi Hebab as it is written, and Elohim came to Bilaam at night, Bimid bar 2220, and Elohim came to Laban it. Aramean and Elohim came to Abimelech, Elohim being the said chieftain he used to come to them not they to him since these chieftains have no settled place you may say it is written Elohim how can it be said it is the other side he answers the name Elohim is shared by all even idolatry is called Elohim namely other Elohim these chieftains are included amongst other Elohim and since they pertain to it they are called by the name Elohim that evil man used witchcraft to summon him and he came to him it is therefore written Lot here this night and I will bring you backward as Hashem shall speak to me it does not say Elohim since that evil man boasted and said why you dehave Abhay though it says of him and Elohim came Bimid bar 22 9 section 3 it pleased Hashem to bless Israel Rabbi Yehuda says that Bilaam was looking for a way
Rap the left above is roused an evil man knew a place through which to hold to the left side in order to curse at that time he looked but did not find any then it is written how shall I curse whom El has not cursed how shall I denounce whom Hashem has not denounced Emid bar 238 it therefore says oh my people remember now what Balak king of Moab devised and what Bilam the son of Beer answered him which is 65 blessed are Israel blessed is their portion in this world and in the world too. Come section 4 if you walk in my statutes we read about the statutes the laws and the precepts and decrees of the oral and the written Torah Rabbi Yehuda says that transgressing the words of the Torah is the same as rendering the holy name defective one must not only walk in God's statutes and keep his statutes one must also perform them even as David did so that the blessings from above will be properly restored 16 if you walk in my statutes vayikra 263 my statutes is the place upon which the decrees of the Torah depend namely Malchut as is written and keep my statutes vayikra 184 Malchut is called the statute and the decrees of the Torah are comprised in it and keep my laws vayikra 2518 law is another high place ceir and to which the statute Malchut cleaves and the upper and lower cleave to each other all the precepts of the Torah the decrees of the Torah and the sanctities of the Torah cleave to ceir and and Malchut since they are the Written Torah Zeir Anpin and the Oral Torah Malchut 17 hence my statutes are all those decrees and judgments punishments and commandments which pertain to the place called the Oral Torah namely Malchut called statute and keep my laws namely in the place called the written Torah Zeir Anpin as is written the law of the Elohim of Jacob Tehillim 815 which is Zeir Anpin called Jacob they are attached to each other and all is one the whole of the holy name namely the union of Zeir Anpin. And Malchut he who transgresses the words of the Torah is as if he renders defective the holy name since a statute and the law is the name of the holy one blessed be he therefore if you walk in my statutes is the Oral Torah and, and keep my laws is the written Torah this is the totality of the holy name 18 and do them they 263 he asks what is the meaning of and do them it already says walk and keep why and do them he answers he who observes the precepts of the Torah and Walks in his paths is as if he made him above the Holy One, blessed be he says, as if he made me, this has been explained, therefore, and do them the statute and the laws, Eir and and Malchut, indeed it says, and do them, since through being roused by you they join each other so that the Holy Name will properly prevail, indeed you do them. 19 Rabbi Shimon discussed in the same manner the verse, and David got himself a name, 2 Shmuel 813, did David do that for himself, he answered, since David walked in the ways of the Torah and observed the commandments of the Torah and led the kingdom, well it is as if he made the name above, there was no king in the world who merited this like David who used to rise at midnight and praise the Holy One, blessed be he, until the Holy Name Malchut came up with its throne when daylight broke, therefore it is as if he really made a name, he raised it to be united with Zeir and it is said of the other side, and the Yireli woman's son blasphemed the name. And cursed Vayikra 2411 hence and David got him a name it therefore says and do them namely if you strive to do them and properly construct the holy name all the blessings from above will be by you properly set section 5 then I will give you rain in due season Rabbi Shimon tells us that anyone who gives charity to the poor constructs the holy name 20 then I will give you rain in due season Vayikra 264 everyone will bestow of his strength upon you who are they the correction you made of the unison of the holy name the unison of statute and laws eir and, and malchut so that they will bestow plenty upon you it is similarly written and they shall keep the way of Hashem to do justice and law Bereshit 1819 if it is written and they shall keep the way of Hashem why should it say to do justice let charity and law he answers whoever keeps the ways of the Torah is as if he does charity and law what are charity and law they are the holy one. Blessed be he, Rabbi Shimon, with and said, Woe to the people who do not know or care for the glory of their master, for he who daily constructs the holy name is he who gives charity to the poor. Section 6 Charity to the poor. We learn from Rabbi Shimon that giving charity to the poor causes the holy name to be made whole, since charity is the tree of life and it bestows blessings upon righteousness. He says that the awakening above is according to one's actions below the poor man has nothing of his own except what he is given. The moon has no light except what the sun gives her. Rabbi Shimon says that the poor man is as if dead because he is from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but anyone who pities him and gives him charity causes the tree of life to rest upon the tree of death. He concludes by saying that righteousness is not rectified or perfected except through charity. 21 Come and behold, it has been explained this way the poor man is attached to. Judgment and all that he eats is through judgment, which is the place called righteousness. Malchut, as is written, a prayer had tefila of the poor when he faints. Tehillim 1021. This tefila is the hand tefila, namely Malchut, that when not united with Zeir and is poor and is called righteousness, he who gives charity to the poor makes the holy name above properly whole. He joins her with Zeir and that bestows everything upon her, since charity is the tree of life. Zeir and and charity gives and bestows upon righteousness. Malchut, when it bestows upon righteousness, they are united with each other. Zeir and with Malchut, and the holy name is whole. He who effects an awakening below by giving charity is surely as if he made whole the holy name in a similar manner according to one's actions below. So is the awakening above. Hence it is written, Happy are they who maintain justice and do righteousness at all times. Tehillim 1063. Do righteousness refers to the holy one, blessed be he who. One made so to speak 22 come and behold we learned where the poor man is that is Malchut when not united with Zeir and what is the reason thereof it is that the poor man has nothing of his own save that which he is given the moon Malchut also has no light of her own save what the sun Zeir and gives her 23 come and behold why is the poor man considered to be as a dead man because this is brought about by that place as he is in a place of death for Malchut is the secret of the tree of knowledge of good and evil if one is worthy it is of goodness and life but if he is not it is of evil and death he is therefore called a dead man he who pities him and gives him charity causes the tree of life called charity to rest upon the tree of knowledge of good and evil which is the tree of death as it is written but righteousness let charity delivers from death Mishlei 102 thus as man does below in relieving the poor man called a dead man so he does exactly above in causing the tree of life to rest upon the tree of death happy is the portion of he who is worthy of making a holy name above namely to unite it with Zeir and for that reason charity surpasses everything 24 these words refer to charity for its own sake as this way charity arouses righteousness namely Zeir and arouses Malchut and causes them to be together so that everything will turn into a holy name properly for righteousness is not rectified or perfected save through charity as is written in charity shall you be established Yeshayah 5414 this was addressed to the congregation of Israel Malchut which is perfected through charity alone it is therefore written and do them Vayikra 263 as it is done through the arousal below section 7 and I will give you peace in the land Rabbi Yossi says that a man lying in his bed at night should not speak about the demons that roam around seeking judgment he tells us that when the children of Israel are found to be Meritorious God gives them peace in the land. Rabbi Abba talks about the fact that when the leader is good, the whole world is saved because of his merit, and yet Josiah was killed even though he was a worthy leader who had done honest deeds. Rabbi Shimon says that was a result of Josiah's disbelief of Jeremiah's warnings and his failure to admonish Israel to repent. Rabbi Abba says that the Shechinah went into exile with Israel and was God's pledge to them when he will ask for his pledge back. He will come to live with Israel. Rabbi Yehuda speaks about Moses taking the tent and pitching it outside the camp, and Rabbi Shimon explains to him that meant that the tent of meeting that was the Shechinah should be kept in the hands of a trustee until it was known who should keep it. Israel having been false to God with the creation of the golden calf, God made Joshua the trusted one who was worthy of guarding the pledge in spite of the fact that Israel sent God did not remove his pledge from. Them and they did not forsake his pledge. Rabbi Yitzhak says that God still watches them and sees them in their synagogues and schools. 25 And I will give you peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. Vayikra 266 Rabbi Yussi opened the discussion with the verse Tremble and sin not. Tehillim 45 This verse has been explained. It behooves man to have his good inclination,
Clippa and all her companions, this is by night by day the verse, and I will remove evil beasts out of the land, alludes to men from her side who cause damage in the world, this is the meaning of neither shall the sword go through your land, Bayakra 266 27. Rabbi Abba said it has been explained that even a sword of peace shall not go through your land, as in the case of Pharaoh Nico who wanted to pass through the land of Israel, but the king Josiah did not permit it, the meaning of neither. Shall the sword go through your land, alludes to her companions who come from the side of the said Clippa, I will remove evil beasts out of the land, means that the Clippa itself shall not have dominion over the land, nor shall it even go through, not the sword of the other nations, and not even one armed person shall pass you. 28. This is what King Josiah asked for when he did not allow the soldiers of Pharaoh Nico to go through the land, it has been explained that he was caught in the sins. Of Israel and was therefore killed as is written the breath of our nostrils the anointed of Hashem was taken in their pits each of 420 we must examine this for we learned that if the leader of the people is good the whole world is saved due to his merit if the leader of the people is not honest the whole people are caught for his sin yet why was Josiah who was a worthy leader of honest deeds caught in Israel since 29 and he answers this happened because he did not believe Jeremiah and did not admonish Israel to repent for he thought they were all as righteous as he was Jeremiah told him of this but he did not believe him and was therefore caught in their sins moreover the moon Malchut had then the lowest light and was about to be completely blocked since it was near the destruction of the temple section 8 and I will set my tabernacle among you Rabbi Yossi tells us that God reproves and corrects those he loves but does not do so for those he Hate so as not to give them a portion of himself. Rabbi Yossi also talks about the spirits that wander about and chastise people. 30 And I will set my tabernacle among you. Vayakra 2611. The tabernacle is the Shechinah. My tabernacle means my pledge as the Shechinah was pledged because of the sins of Israel and went into exile with them. And I will set my tabernacle my pledge. Surely this is like the fable about a man who loved his neighbor. He said to him, I have the highest regard for you. And wish to dwell with you. His friend said, How can I be sure you shall live with me? He took all the delightful objects of his house and brought them to him. He said, Here is my pledge that I will never part from you. 31 Likewise, the Holy One, blessed be he, wished to dwell among Israel. What did he do? He took his precious delight, the Shechinah, and brought it down to Israel. He said to them, Here I give you my pledge so that I will never part from you, though the Holy One, blessed be he has. Gone away from us, he left the pledge in our hands as the Sheshanah is with us in exile, and we keep his delight when he asks for his pledge, he will come to dwell with us. Hence, it is written, and I will set my tabernacle head Mishkin among you, meaning I will give a pledge head Mishkin in your hands that I will dwell with you. And though Israel are now in exile, they have the pledge of the Holy One, blessed be he, and they never left him. 32 And my spirit shall not abhor you, but this is likened to a man who loved his friend and wished to dwell with him. What did he do? He took his own bed, brought it to his house, and said, Here is my bed in your house, so that I shall not go away from you, your bed and your possession. So did the Holy One, blessed be he, say, And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. Behold, my bed, the Sheshanah in your house, now that my bed is with you, know that I shall not be separated from you, therefore, and my soul shall not abhor you. Will not go away from you. 33 And I will walk among you and will be your Elohim. But 12 Now that I have given you my pledge, you will surely know that I walk with you as is written. For Hashem your Elohim walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and to give up your enemies before you. Therefore shall your camp be holy. Devarim 2315, section 9. And Moses would take the tent. 34 One night Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yehuda were in a village near the Sea of Galilee. They arose at midnight. Rabbi Yitzhak said to Rabbi Yehuda, Let us discuss the words of the Torah. For though we are in such a place, we must not be divided from the tree of life. 35 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion and said, And Moses would take the tent and pitch it outside the camp. Shema 337. He asks, And Moses would take the tent. Why did he do so? And answers, Moses said, Since Israel are false to the Holy One, blessed be he, and exchanged his glory for a golden calf, let his Pledge, the Shechinah called the tent of meeting, be in the hands of a trustee until we know with whom the pledge shall remain. 36 He said to Joshua, You shall be the trusted one between the Holy One, blessed be he and Israel, and the pledge shall remain in your faithful hands. We shall see with whom it will remain. It is written, and he turned back to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart out of the tent of it. 11 What is the reason he gave IT to Joshua? Because in relation to Moses, he was like the moon to the sun, as the moon is the secret of Malchut called the tent of meeting, hence he was worthy of guarding the pledge which is of his own side. Therefore he did not depart out of the tent. 37 The Holy One, blessed be he said to Moses, It is not fit to do it this way, since I gave my pledge into the hands of the children of Israel, and though they sinned against me, they shall have the pledge with them and shall not part with it, would you? Wish that I would part from the children of Israel and never return to them, for the Shechinah is the pledge in the hands of the children of Israel that he shall never leave them. Return my pledge to them, and for its sake I shall never leave them wherever they may be. 38 Though Israel sinned against the Holy One, blessed be he, they did not forsake his pledge, nor did the Holy One, blessed be he, take it from them. Hence, wherever Israel were exiled, the Shechinah was with them, therefore it is written, and I will set my tabernacle among you. This has already been explained. Section 10 My beloved is like a gazelle. 39 Rabbi Yitzhak opened the discussion and said, My beloved is like a gazelle or a young heart. Behold, he sure Hasherim. 29 Happy are Israel who have merited this pledge of the Most High King, and though they are in exile, the Holy One, blessed be he, comes every new moon, every Shabbat, and every holiday to look in at them and observe his pledges. Delight that is with them. 40 This is like a king against whom his matron rebelled. He banished her out of his palace. What did she do? She took her son with her. The delight and love of the king, since the king cared for her, he let him remain in her hands. When the king wished for the matron and her son, he would ascend the stairs, descend the steps, and climb walls to watch them from between the lattices in the wall. When he saw them, he started to weep from behind the lattices in the wall, and then went away. 41 This is true for Israel, though they left the king's palace and went into exile. They did not forsake the pledge, since the king cared for them. He left it with them. When the holy king thought of the matron and Israel, he ascended the stairs, descended the steps, and climbed walls to look at them from between the lattices in the wall. When he saw them, he began to cry. Hence it is written, My beloved is like a gazelle or a young heart, jumping from the wall to the roof and from it. Roof to the wall, behold, he stands behind our wall, namely in the synagogues and schools. He looks in at the windows, for surely a synagogue must have windows. He peers through the lattice of it to watch and see them. Israel should therefore rejoice on the day they know this and say, This is the day which Hashem has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Tehillim 11,824, section 11, righteousness together with its judgments. Rabbi Yussi tells us that God reproves and corrects those he loves but does not do so for those he hates so as not to give them a portion of himself. Rabbi Yussi also talks about the spirits that wander about and chastise people. 42 And if you shall despise my statutes, Vayakra 2,615, Rabbi Yussi opened the discussion with the verse, My son, do not despise the chastening of Hashem nor be weary of his correction. Mishlei 311, Israel are so beloved to the Holy One, blessed be he that he wished to chasten them and lead them on the true path as a father pities his child in his love for them, his stick is always in his hand to lead them on the true path so that they will not turn right or left. Hence it is written, For Hashem reproves him whom he loves, even as a father, the son in whom he delights. Ibid 12, the Holy One, blessed be he, refrains from reproving he who he does not love but hates, and he removes the stick away from him. 43, it is written, I have loved you, says Hashem Malachi 12, and in his love the stick is always in his hand to guide us, and I hated Esau. Ibid 3, and therefore took the stick away from him, removed reproof from him, so as not to give him a portion in me, my soul despises him. But as for you, I have loved you indeed, and therefore, my son, do not despise the chastening of Hashem, nor be weary of his correction. What is the meaning of do not despise? Had to cut to it means do not despise him as if fleeing before thorns had caught him, for the kings who
Ground anymore it means that he will give no more judgments to the prosecutors with which to destroy the world but only as much as the world can bear it is therefore written then I will punish you no more Vayikra 268 he will surely give more as much as the world can bear 46 why would he give more to punish you seven times for your sins but he asked seven times had the Holy One blessed be he collected his due that is punished in accordance with the sin the world would not have been able to bear it for a single moment as is written if you yeah, should mark iniquities Hashem who could stand tail in 1303 yet you say seven times for your sins 47 and he answers what the verse teaches us in saying seven times is this behold seven is before you who is she she is the sabbatical year literally year namely Malchut sweetened by Bino which is seven for she is called seven as it says at the end of every seven years you shall make a release to Barim 151 the scripture therefore says seven times for your sins Malchut is called seven and also daughter of seven what is the difference between them in saying seven only it means to have a release to execute judgments and to set everyone free she is called daughter of seven when attached to another Zeir and then to illuminate and rule over her kingdom and make known the kingship throughout the land and to everyone she is then called the daughter of seven hence it is written the name of the city is beer she will well of seven to this day. Bear she twenty six thirty three. The well of seven is Isaac's well. Everything is one forty eight. Rabbi Abba said, and I will chastise you even I seven times for your sins. Vayikra two thousand six hundred and twenty eight. And I will chastise you through other attendants as already explained. Even I I Z I R Anpin who is roused to save you. Seven is Malchut which is roused towards you to save you. That is Z I R Anpin and Malchut shall be with them in exile. Hence they shall get them out of exile as will be. Explained forty nine. Come and behold the holy one. Blessed be he bears a sublime love for Israel. This I S like a king who had an only son who constantly sinned against him. One day as he sinned against the king, the king said, I have beaten you previously, but you have not learned from now on. See what I shall do to you if I drive you out of the land and deport you from the kingdom. Wild bears, wild wolves, or murderers might attack you and kill you. What shall I do? We shall both leave the country. 50 Similarly the words even I mean that I and you shall leave the land namely go into exile this is what the Holy One blessed be he said to Israel I have warned you but you did not lend your ears I have brought warriors and angels of destruction upon you to beat you but you have not your kent if I drive you out of the land on your own I fear that bears and wolves will attack and kill you what then shall I do to you and I shall leave the land and go into exile this is the meaning of and I will chastise you we shall go into exile you may say that I will leave you but even I am with you seven times for your sins that is seven Malchut will be deported with you for what reason for your sins section 13 for your transgressions was your mother put away Rabbi Abba says that God is with Israel even in their exile and when their exile is over he will return with them 51 this is the meaning of for your transgressions was your mother put Away at Shea 501 the Holy One blessed be he said you brought it about that you and I shall not dwell in the land behold the matron leaving the palace with you observe everything in ruin my palace and yours in ruins for the palace is not fit for a king save when he enters it together with the matron Malchut the king then rejoices only when he enters the matron's palace since she is with her children in the palace all may then rejoice now that the son and the matron are not here my palaces in ruins what shall I do I shall go with you and now though Israel are in exile the Holy One blessed be he is with them and does not leave them when Israel are released from the exile the Holy One blessed be he will return with them as it is written Hashem your Elohim will turn your captivity to Barim 303 indeed Hashem your Elohim will turn the Holy One blessed be he will return we have already explained this section 14 these are the words of the covenant Rabbi Yossi tells Rabbi Shia that the curses in the book of Vayikra were said by Bura and those in Devarim were said by Moses himself and yet both were the words of the covenant because good and evil depend on them righteous and righteousness together are called the covenant thus remember and keep are also bound together one by day and one by night Rabbi Shia agrees and says that Shabbat is called the covenant he talks about God's promise to give peace in the land Rabbi Shia explains that God promised not to cast Israel away nor to abhor them because the Sheshanah the beloved of his soul is among them Rabbi Yossi talks about a son's duty to honor his father even after the father's death and the way to honor him is to walk in truth and perfect his own actions this increases the praise of the father both in this world and in the world to come 52 Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi were walking on the road when they chanced upon a cave in the field Rabbi Shia questioned Rabbi Yossi. Concerning the words, these are the words of the covenant besides the covenant. Devarim 2869. Why does it say the words of the covenant? It should have said the words of Bura. He said to him, It has been explained that these curses in the book of Vayikra were said by Bura and that those in Devarim were said by Moses himself, as we have already learned. 53. Come and behold, the ones as well as the others are the words of the covenant, for though they were from Bura, yet they are the words of the covenant, since good and evil depend upon them. Good comes from the righteous, yes, and evil comes from judgment, the place of judgment, righteousness, namely Malchut, righteous and righteousness, yes, and Malchut are the covenant and are called the covenant. Therefore, these words are the words of the covenant, the covenant which is yes, and Malchut is bound together, and hence remember and keep Tifra and Malchut are bound together, remember by day and keep by night, they are together by. The secret of the verse and there was evening and there was morning one day Beersheet 15 thus the covenant is Yezid and Malchut together since Zeir and Ben is connected to Malchut only three Yezid it is therefore written covenant since they are indeed the words of the covenant the reprimand in the book of Vayikra and in the book of Devarim wherever the word covenant is mentioned it pertains to this place 54 Rabbi Shia said surely this is so hence Shabbat which is remember and keep Yezid and Malchut is called the covenant as is written wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat to observe the Shabbat throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant Shema 3116 everything is one and the same this place Yezid and Malchut together is uniformly called the covenant 55 come and behold it is written and I will give peace in the land Vayikra 266 pieces Yezid which is peace in the land household peace and the peace of the world since Malchut is called land house and world and I will chastise you even I seven Vayikra 2628 what is seven surely it is righteousness Malchut on the side of judgment assuredly this is the covenant and therefore these are the words of the covenant section 15 I will not cast them away nor will I abhor them to destroy them utterly 56 Rabbi Yossi said it is written and yet for all that lit and also even this when they are in the land of their enemies Vayikra 2644 and also even this even is as even I of 28 which refers to Zeir and also includes the congregation of Israel called this Hebzot Malchut that never leaves them when they are in the land of their enemies I will not cast them away nor will I abhor them though I am not connected to them so that I would break my covenant with them Vayikra 2644 because if I do not redeem them my covenant is divided and the union between Yezid and Malchut is undone the scripture therefore says to Break my covenant with them. 57 Rabbi Shia said, I have heard something new that Rabbi Lazar said, I will not cast them away, also detest them, nor will I abhor them to destroy them utterly. But 44 it should have been written, I will not hit them, nor will I kill them to destroy them utterly. He answers the meaning of I will not cast them away, nor will I abhor them, is that a man who hates someone is abhorred and detested by him, but here I will not cast them away, nor will I abhor them. Why? Because the beloved of my soul is among them, namely the Sheshanah for whose sake they are all my friends, hence it says, Lechalotam lit to destroy them utterly. Lechalotam is spelled without the Bob as an allusion to the Sheshanah called Bride Hebkala. Lechalotam is as for the Kala, it is for the Bride that I do not detest or abhor them, because she is the beloved of my soul, and the beloved of my soul is among them. 58 This is like a man who loves a woman who lives in a market. Of tanners who smell disagreeably were she not there he would never have entered there since she is there the tanners market seems to him like a market of spice merchants where there are all the best odors in the world 59 year 2 and yet for all that when they are in the land of their enemies which is a tanners market of evil smell I will not cast them away nor will I abhor them why to destroy them utterly had lechalotum because their bride had kalatam the sheshanah who abides. There is my love and the beloved of my soul it therefore seems to
Blessed be he, the Holy One, blessed be he has compassion for him and puts him on his throne of glory. Surely a son honors his father. 61 Rabbi Lazar, for example, who honored his father in this world and in that world, now increases the praise of Rabbi Shimon in both worlds, in this world and in the world to come more so than during his life, for he merited holy sons and holy signs. Happy are the righteous who merit holy children and holy signs. It says of them all that see them shall. Acknowledge them that they are the seed which Hashem has blessed. Yeshayah 619. Blessed be Hashem forever. Amen and Amen. Hashem will reign forever. Amen and Amen. End of the book of Ayikra.